Good day folks, welcome back to Dragonfly Projects. Glad to have you here today. So the question today is, can we tune an auto-tune chainsaw? In my case, I am referring to the Husqvarna 572 XP that I've acquired recently. This is an auto-tune carburetor, meaning that the saw itself is tuning its high jet, its low jet, and it's idling to perform as best as possible according to the current conditions versus a more traditional saw like the Echo 590 where you would take a small screwdriver and you can see the ports here you have your idle your high jet and your low jet where you would manually adjust a carburetor now full disclosure I did not come up with this when I read the manual for the 572 I did not come across this but I watched a video on YouTube by a fellow named um, Tim Ard and I explain how to properly set up your auto-tune chainsaw. I imagine for a steel Mtronic saw it'd be the same idea, uh, but it was specific in that video for a Husqvarna auto-tune carburetor. So basically the short story is we're gonna start it, let it idle for five and a half minutes. Once that's done, we're gonna take it and do a rip cut. So not a cross cut, but a rip cut for about 60 seconds full throttle and that basically lets the carburetor figure out where it's happiest and it will remember those settings here's a little crash course crash course I am going to simplify some things and this is to the best of my knowledge so I apologize if something is incredibly wrong but basically a carburetor uses oxygen and fuel to send to your piston to make some power. Now, the fuel ratio is gonna change. There's like that precise window where your saw is happiest. This much oxygen, this much fuel makes it happy. The thing is, this is a ratio that changes. Stay with me here. Sorry, when I made my uh, maple syrup, basically the easiest way to do it is you take your boiling water temperature and you add seven degrees Fahrenheit and that's where you will start to have maple syrup. The thing is at sea level, so one atmosphere or 760 millimeters of mercury of pressure, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But every single day the atmospheric pressure changes where you are. Again, I'm in Eastern Ontario, so my atmospheric pressure is very different than somebody who lives in Denver, Colorado, where they are at much higher altitude. So when I was making maple syrup, every day I was finishing syrup, I had to boil water and check with a thermometer at which temperature it boiled. Sometimes it's 210 Fahrenheit, sometimes it's 213 Fahrenheit, and I would take that number and add seven for my maple syrup. Same idea with the chainsaw. That ratio changes depending on the atmospheric pressure. So that's why when you have a cold morning and a hot afternoon running a chainsaw with a manual carburetor, your saw will not run the same throughout the day. So it's a good idea to adjust it slightly. Now, usually you're not gonna need major, major adjustments, but the ratio will change making the saw perform differently. Same idea with the auto-tune, except this time the chainsaw does all the thinking for you. But the first time you use it, you have to let it get used to your environment. Now, I don't know, I rechecked the footage quickly. I don't know if it shows in the YouTube video when I unbox this chainsaw, but basically when I started the first time with the chain brake off, the chain was spinning slowly on the chainsaw. Why is that? because there's a clutch here, a centrifugal clutch, meaning that as this clutch spins, there's a spring that is holding the clutch in. It's spinning inside of a container. And as the same idea as if you're turning in the car on the highway going quickly, you're getting pushed to the side. Same idea, as it spins, that clutch gets pushed out and it overpowers the spring and then it grabs a cylinder and it starts spinning. So that's how your chain spins. So if you're idling too fast, if your chainsaw at rest is spinning too fast, it starts to grab that cylinder, which moves the chain. 
Now in the user manual for the Echo, to find the proper idling speed, you set the idling until the chain starts to move, just barely, and then you back it up by a quarter turn. So the first time I used the saw, the idling was too high because the chain was being engaged. So the saw has to think for itself and figure it out. Now I've only put maybe two tanks of fuel through this and I've never sustained big, long, heavy cuts. I've never let it idle for long. I'm not sure it's gonna make a huge difference because the saw has been uh, used for a couple uh, of cuts already. So it's probably adjusted some, but I would love to let it idle do the proper uh, adjustment procedures and then I'll compare. So what I'll do is I'll start the saw. I'll make a cut in this white pine. Uh, this pine has been down for about three months now. Make a cut, I'll start it. I'll rev it up to get it to operating temperature. I'll cut right away, I'll shut it down. Then I'll do the whole break in procedure. the readjusting the tuning of the carburetor and I'll do a similar cut just to compare if there's any difference with the performance of the saw. Uh, for that test, I'll also turn off my, um, my personal mic here so you can better uh, hear the difference with the uh, mic that's on the camera. And just for fun, I'm going to compare it to the Echo cut time. Obviously, this is comparing oranges to apples. This is a good high-level grade homeowner saw, a firewood saw. The other one is a professional saw that's being used uh, in professional loggers, uh, arborists, and tree felling in general. And a quick note, if you didn't know for the Echo, at least this model, if you check the recoil head here, the handle, you can actually use it to unscrew your gas tank and your oil tank so you don't have to break your fingers every single time. So let me get dressed up. I'm gonna throw in some PPE. We'll get started. I'll make the first couple cuts with the Echo just to get it so it's ni nice and uh, similar circumference or diameter everywhere because this end is a bit bigger right now just to make sure it's a fair test and I wanna get away from this knot. And then I'll do a cut with this one and I'll check the footage when I'm editing the video and I'll put the official time once I'm editing. Then we'll do the cut with the 572, stop it. I'll shoot a whole break-in procedure tuning of the carburetor and then I'll come back and I'll do the same cut. And then we'll see if we can hear a difference and time-wise if we can see a difference. All right, let me get dressed up and I'll be right back. All right, microphone is off. So now it's using the uh, microphone from the camera, so it's going to be the same distance and my body is not going to change the positioning with the saw, so it should be the same noise you're hearing. Uh, yeah, so let's cut a couple cookies off of this to bring it to the same diameter. Uh, then I'll time this one, we'll time this one, we'll auto-tune that one, sorry, we'll adjust the carb on that one and then we'll uh, try again. what I was talking about with the idling. I'm going to up the speed of the idling until the saw uh, carries the chain around and then I'll bring it back so you can see what I talked about. Check on the echo.
That's a 20 inch bar, that's a 28 inch bar. Okay, so I'm just gonna start it, warm it up, and we're gonna get to cutting and then we'll auto tune it. As you can see, both chains are very sharp. You're getting good, taking good chunks out of it. As you saw at the beginning, the saw wasn't happy. You could tell the idling was still figuring stuff out. And as you saw, the chain was moving. So basically it was idling at the wrong speed. So I think the tuning will, do, uh, will make a difference and it will help. So very simple. I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna let it idle for five and a half minutes alone just by itself, figure its things out. Then we'll move uh, a bit further away. I have some windfalls uh, tree that uh, I won't use ever. And we'll rip full throttle into that piece of wood for about a minute. And then we'll try this test again, okay? Sorry, I think this one just needs two squirts. No need for a choke. Wide open throttle for about 60 seconds, rip cut. saw at the beginning it was trying to figure stuff out I was going along um, there is stuff that looks like sawdust here because the tree is pretty punky it's pretty rotten which is why it fell in the first place but here at the end where we start to get into some sounder wood you can see chain is still very sharp cutting well and as you saw on idling the chain stopped spinning now because the saw figured itself out figure where it's happy so let's bring it back to our first test and let's try to see if there's a cutting speed difference. I tried putting you guys back at the exact same spot or close, close to where it was. So I've just done the rip cut. I've let the saw figure things out. Figure things out. I'm gonna try that uh, to cut a cookie again and see what kind of speeds we get or how it sounds or how it feels. So far it does feel more responsive.
I, I don't know the numbers, but feel-wise, this thing just ate that cookie. Oh my god. <laughs> saw compared to the echo I was like oh it's a lot better but this thing just blew me away wow again my reference for chainsaws is an echo 590 a 12 volt DeWalt electric saw and this thing so obviously this is like using a scooter versus a tank to get somewhere but holy moly this thing cuts now I was saying the echo felt more like in motorcycle terms like a smooth higher revving like inline four it sounds like it wants to rev and this thing just felt like a big v-twin thumper but now that it seems to be tuned properly to my environment and my weather conditions that thing just ate that wood wow super impressed okay give me a second let's close let's close this video after i haven't been through the user manual for the saw since i got it um fairly sure it never said oh i just noticed there's a fuel gauge window i never realized I don't recall them saying you need to idle it for five to six minutes and then just do a rip cut for 60 to 90 seconds, full throttle to let the saw figure things out. But this saw feels alive now. Oh my, what a difference. I am very impressed. I was already very satisfied with the saw, but now it's just a totally different ball game. Wow. Now I can see why this thing costs three times as much as the 590. Now don't get me wrong, the 590, I still love it. It's a lot lighter, but this thing just eats wood now. Granted, this is not hard wood. And 28 inch bar is probably the biggest I'll need because I have a couple white pines that are on the bigger size. Uh, this is just a limb from one of the white pines. But man, 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 this thing is impressive. Very happy with it. Again, I take zero credit for this procedure. I saw it on a video by Tim Ard, where um, I believe a gentleman from Husvarna went through the motions for the 550, the 562, and the 572 XP. Um, this saw just woke up again. Now this saw is tuned to my region, to my environment. If I was to start it tomorrow, because today is very, very warm and humid, it would probably need a bit of time to readjust to the atmospheric conditions. But I'm guessing that now the big tune is done. Now the fine tuning is where this saw will shine. Because I think they said it, it senses and auto tunes itself 10 times per revolution of the piston. And if this thing uh, spins at 13,000 RPMs, that's a lot of micro adjustments versus the more traditional um, old style carb that uses the screws to decide how much fueling goes into your low and high jet to be to be fair i've i've very rarely uh, adjusted the echo one i'm still new to the chainsaw world and two i the wood i cut is not big enough really that i see a major major difference except when it's towards the end of the afternoon and it's very hot outside and the saw is getting pretty hot i will notice it starts to fall flat on its face and i have to do some adjustments with uh, the high jet mostly but man 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 very happy with this now i learned something today i thought i would share it with you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you knew about this already more power to you uh to be fair a commenter in my unboxing video about the 572 pointed me in the direction of tim ard and that's how i found it so thank you kind stranger uh, i just love the comments you guys you bring suggestions and ideas that I did not even dream of. Uh, I know I'm thinking one way and you guys suggest something that's completely out of the left field for me and sometimes they're amazing ideas. Um, this saw just went from awesome to amazing. Very, very happy. I have more stuff coming in. I'm still working on the garage. Uh, I'm finishing the electrical. I've put some panels in. There has been some water infiltration, tiny bit. I think it came we had a freak rainstorm and it came from the backside of the back wall that usually never gets hit. And I think it's squeaked between the metal flashing and the, my, uh, my Tyvek. So now I've uh, sealed that area. So I'm going to keep an eye out for that before I completely close off the wall, just in case more water gets in. But thanks for stopping by guys. If you have any comments, suggestions, 
rude remarks, leave them below. I read all the comments. I try to get back to you guys. I have more content coming. I've started doing some work for the Christmas tree farm. I'm about to put my order for my first batch of trees for the spring. Very excited. I'll share that with you guys fairly soon. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for watching. Comment below. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see. If you have any questions or comments, rude remarks, by all means, leave them below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day, guys.